This looks like uh, if Optimus Prime mistransformed, right? <laughs> That's what would happen. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going, everybody? My name is Blitzwinger, ladies and gents. Uh, yeah, that does not look uh, particularly comfortable, does it? But uh, welcome to Lego City Undercover. The absolutely chaotic and crazy, crazy world of Lego City is now once again being explored by us and today we're going to be taking a look at every single one of the police characters that are available in the game. We're going to play as most of them at least for a little bit. Uh, we're going to roam around just a tiny little bit, uh, running around probably doing some missions, a couple challenges maybe on the way because uh, that could be a whole a lot of fun. So our first one is Shaky Harry and as you can see uh, I also have the super minifigure on. So don't think to yourself like, hey, is Shaky Harry uh, absolutely ridiculously huge compared to everybody else? No, it's one of the power bricks in the game, which in my opinion to this day is the coolest power brick ever in a LEGO game. Which, uh, of course, you can see a video about that as well that I've done. So with that in mind, ladies and gents, of course, here is Shaky Harry. He's got a grapple gun just like all of the police officer characters do, which means that you can go on ahead and do, wait, do that. To foes. Um, okay, that was not a foe, that was a civilian, but he was supposed to be wrapped up, so I'm a little confused as to why he did not get. Okay, why are they getting not getting grapple hooked? Folks, hello! I am here to grapple hook thee. That is what they do, the police characters in the game. That's kind of their main functionality is the ability to go on ahead and grapple hook your enemies. Plus, the other benefit of playing as the police officer characters is that you get to go on ahead and first of all do this, which is pretty cool Sorry, uh, and it an makes emergency. sense. And then in addition to that, the other really, really neat thing that I like about the police officer characters is the scan ability. So you can scan for clues and such, which makes sense because you're kind of like a detective sort of character. So, you know, it's understandable, I would say. And then in addition to that, you can go on ahead and also, like, let me show you specifically what the scans are because I know some people are like, what do you mean by that? But here we go. So first, we can grapple hook things down as well, so we don't have to just grapple hook enemies and such. But once we have grappled something, we can then... Um, I don't know if I can get up there. Okay, let me use the flyer to get up here really fast. There we go. So here's the detective scanning ability. So you can follow clues like the Pink Panther. Boom, 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 ba -do -ba -do boom to reveal hidden clues. From beyond, uh, awkward. Ah, uh, well, well, isn't this a little, a little awkward? There we go. Ta-da! And we have found a big giant box. So now we would be able to bring it over here and actually complete this challenge. Whereas before this, we wouldn't be able to do so. So obviously, it's really cool to have the police officer character and ability set. Uh, available to you. So then you bring in your character and you go riding around. Uh, and if you're like me, you're a complete buffoon at it. So yeah, that, that that's the ability set there. So let's go on ahead and take a quick peek at the entire roster and sw start switching characters because of course that's what we're here to do. So let's Sorry, grab the police, police car business. since it would make sense for us to do so since we're showcasing the police officers. I'm just going to pull over right here by the Disguise booth, which allows you to, of course, switch characters. And once we have switched, we jump in here, and we will start with the new version of Chase McCain. So here is Chase McCain. He is the brand new remaster exclusive Chase McCain. And the reason why I'm saying remaster exclusive is because, of course, Chase McCain was in the first game. He was the main hero of the not for sorry, I, I shouldn't say first game because this is just a remastered version of the initial game. But if you don't know, the game had initially come out on the Wii U and it was a Wii U exclusive title. Yes, you heard me correctly. And I know it sounds kind of crazy to think like, what? A Lego game that was exclusive to the Wii U? But that was the case. They did not release it on any other console for ages. And then the last year, back in 2017, we finally got the game on other consoles and it was remastered and re-released on the PlayStation 4 the Xbox One, and I think it was also released on the PC. So that is definitely very, very cool to have gotten the game now in uh, our hands for 
all the other people who did not have a Wii U to play it. That is really, really awesome. But in the process of getting the game, they actually went ahead and added a few new elements like Chase McCain, who is currently uh, driving this fantastic vehicle. So here he is. He's got a really sweet looking outfit. I really, really, really like the new costume. In fact, I would probably say that I like it a little bit better than the old school costume. Now, I know what you're asking at this point. If you've not seen the older school costume and the original costume for Chase McCain, you might be saying to yourself like, well, I would like to see that. I want to see what that looks like so I can tell you myself if I like it better or worse. Well, Luckily for you, we're right back into the Skies booth, so let's go on ahead and do exactly that. So let's hop on in here, and then we're going to grab the new, or I guess old, costume that Chase used to wear. So obviously, the main difference is really on the top part of the character. You can see that he's gotten a much darker blue costume, and then the vest that he wears is a little bit darker shade of gray whereas this one has a lighter shade of gray for the vest and of course he's wearing a light blue shirt uh, as well so here we are with the older version of chase mccain classic mccain as i like to call him and he is pretty fantastic let's roam all the way up here let's go to another disguise booth before we switch up our characters plus it gives us an opportunity to drive through beautiful lego city and again, I will say, as I'm doing these, like, highlight videos, you know, showing you guys all of the awesome components of the game, whether it be the vehicles or the red power bricks, or, in this case, all of the police officer characters, I'm just so hopeful that we would get another game. Because I feel like this game is so very, very underrated. It's one of the very best LEGO games ever made. And I really hope that at some point, sooner rather than later, we will get another one of them. So here's Grace Make Peace who is kind of the um, counter to Chase McCain, kind of the female version of Chase McCain in the game. So if you're playing and you want to play as a, a female police officer, you can go on ahead and you can play as Grace Makepeace, which I like how her name is kind of like Makepeace. It's a double, a ton, well, not a ton, a double meaning, kind of like, you know, make peace, you'd think it's like a Lego reference because Legos come in pieces, or Lego comes in pieces, and so on and so forth. But then in addition to that, she's an officer. She's a police officer. She's trying to make peace. Get it? Ha 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 ha. Okay, we'll, ju we'll just pretend that that was a lot funnier than it turned out to be. All right, so, of course, outside of um, the basic character set uh, of, you know, being able to fire away the grapple guns and everything like that. We don't get anything exclusive for these characters. So that's a little disappointing because obviously it would have been nice if there was some more differentiation between the characters, even within the category of police officers. So it's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. And it still does give us a good variety when we take into account all the other categories like farmers and astronauts and... Um, miners and firefighters and uh, of course police and criminals and uh, citizens and so on and so forth so there is a lot of variety outside of the specific categories so here we have Chase undercover which is interesting that they actually put him into the police costume I guess technically because in the storyline he does put on an undercover costume so it makes sense but it is interesting to me just because you know they could have put this into the citizen category because he's undercover or even the criminal category you know because hey it's now he's got the criminal ability so it would have made some sense but they chose it to go against that and just stick with the grapple gun abilities for this particular version of chase mccain so so far we've only been taking a look at kind of the main protagonists of the game but you'll see that there's a lot more to be discovered as we continue to switch more and more from the different costumes. And there really are a lot to go through. I don't remember the exact number. I just completely blanked out. Um, I guess we could take a look here. We have four times uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 40, 42 police officer characters. So obviously, we're not going to play as every single one in terms of like spend a long time with each one because. That's going to make this a five-hour long video. Then we have Chase Undercover again. The main reason for why they added this is because now you're able to play co-op in this game. So if you're playing with a friend and you both want to dress up as Chase and Undercover, there's a nice way to tell the characters apart because one of you guys could wear this version of him in Undercover suit with the white beanie hat and the... What is that? Teal? What color is that? Green? I don't know. I think it's teal. Like, I never get beyond 
Like, I usually would just call that green, but I know people like to get fancy with their color names. They're like, it's maroon. It's brownish coffee. Milk coffee. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's... I, I don't know what that is. It's brown. There we go. That's the color. Then we've got Grace Makepeace Undercover. Weird that they didn't actually call this one the Undercover Suit, even though it's clearly the Undercover Suit, because it's the exact same costume that Chase McCain wears, except, obviously, it's made for grace so that's pretty cool again to see then from there we have chase in his suit so the first suit is hilarious just because i don't know he just looks like a 80s like mobster <laughs> you know just like super duper like old school mobster or rapper or something like that he just looks really 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 funny in this one and i always feel like there's this one car that you could use and of course there's a lot of vehicles in the game as well which by the way you're going to be seeing a showcase for all the vehicles coming up shortly as well so i hope you guys will be checking that out as well there's flying vehicles and then there's tons and tons of regular ground vehicles as well so if we go over here and go into the compact category and we grab this right here. And you know what? Let's actually keep it nice and pink. I just feel like this costume fits this particular vehicle. Like, he's this kind of old school 80s, you know, star. He just looks really, 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 really funny in this thing. And I think it just works really well for what the idea behind this character is. Now, of course, just like with the undercover suit, the really neat thing is that they do give you another suit available to you. So again, if you're playing co-op and you want to each wear a suit, you can also wear this one right here, which honestly kind of almost makes him look a little bit more like a detective until you look at the very front of the suit because he still has an unbuttoned shirt with like a chest hair sticking out and a big giant uh, accessory on his uh, neck as well. So if you don't pay attention to that, then you kind of think to yourself like, oh, okay, it just, you know, good old Detective McCain, you know? Uh, but then you realize very quickly like, oh, oh, no, he's still, he's still trying to be a classic pop star. So let's drive to our next disguise booth just so we can have a bit of a refresher of our location to make sure that we get to see some more of Lego City because it is an absolutely beautifully massive, massive world. And you have to remember this originally came out in 2013. And I have to say like, if you really look at the size and scale of this place, you realize and start thinking to yourself like, wow, they did an excellent job giving us an absolutely ginormous world to explore and give us something that is pretty much like a family-friendly version of GTA, which I think is super duper cool to see because uh, it shows you that, hey, you could do quality gameplay and like crazy world building uh, and make a huge world in a game that's family-friendly and it doesn't always have to rely on being a mature title, which I think is super duper neat to see. So from the chase suit, we then move on to Frank Honey, another one of our main characters in the game. And here he is looking absolutely ridiculously fancy. So there he is looking fantastic. Then we're going to look at another variation of him, which we're going to hover over quickly, just kind of because it's it's probably one of the weirdest costumes in the entire game. Yes, that is Frank Honey poolside. Uh, wearing nothing but his bathing suit and it's kind of like has nobody told you that nobody wears speedos anymore Frank Come on, bro. Come on. You ain't Michael Phelps, dude You ain't Michael Phelps only those guys at the Olympics wear that stuff. So yeah, that's that uh, How was Frank poolside moving along next up? We have Marion Dunby who is of course Chief Dunby the main <laughs> there's something hilarious about Dunby driving this car uh, that's hilarious. I could never see him drive a car like this because he would just complain the whole time. He'd be like, this is ridiculous. Me, the police chief, has to drive a bright pink car. How dare they? How dare they do this to me? Perfect parking? Sort of. Hey, that was actually pretty good. I like that. We did kind of decently there. Now, this car, although pink, looks a lot more futuristic. And with a name like Valkyrie and the boost that you have here. Whoa! Yeah, you could definitely have a lot more fun driving this thing around Lego City. And there we go. We made it into a convertible. Brilliant. So that 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 just happened. And there's another scanning point right here. So once again, to showcase the abilities of lovely folks like Dunby and the other police officers, I guess, of Lego City, all of whom have fantastic skills. 
even though they let Rexvir escape multiple times and did not suspect Forrest Blackwell of being an absolute criminal mastermind, which was very, very obvious from the very first time that you meet him, you kind of like, hmm, that guy's probably a supervillain. He acts just like about every classic supervillain that you've ever met in any cartoon or anything like that. So, from there, let's get right back to the disguise booth and take a look at the rest of the roster for our police, police characters. Business. And obviously we're going to need to pick up the pace. Oh, I barely managed to get through that. Perfect parking. Perfect parking, kind of. All right. So from Mary Ellen Dombey, we head to Duke Huckleberry, who actually, of course, you meet in the game when you head all the way up here for the very first time to the Bluebell National Park as you arrive at... Bluebell National Park, the police station there, it's run by this fella, Mr. Huckleberry, uh, who is fishing and wrestling a squirrel, I believe, uh, over a fish. So, yeah, that's that was a bit of a surprise. Not a bit. That was a lot of a surprise. Okay, good parking there, Duke. Good parking there, Duke, my boy. Very nicely done. Sorry, coming through. And, uh, yeah, so Duke is obviously kind of the uh, classic old school kind of a bit cheesy but um super duper kind and good person you know um type of police officer then we got ellie phillips who is the world's greatest technologist assistant person she's always helping us out she's basically oracle like just like how batman has oracle to help him on his missions and tell him like hey you got to go over here you got to do this you got to do that well that's what Ellie does for us. She's always helping Chase McCain to solve the case. She's always sending him help if he needs it. She's always telling him like, hey, you got to go over here. You got to do this and that and so on and so forth. And she is the love of uh, Frank Honey. So he's he's always hoping to impress Ellie. And uh, maybe one day he will manage to pull that off. So obviously she still does have some of the cool police officer abilities that we have seen before. So of course the grapple gun, the grapple hook, and so on and so forth. So all of those are still available to Ellie as well. All right, from there we transition into the Ezra Baxter character. And for these ones, we're just gonna kind of hop out. And I feel like, you know, it would be a lot more fun if we actually activated a back the super minifigure class just so we could see these characters in a bit more detail so we're just gonna hop out and see these characters in a larger scale the main reason why I'm now just showcasing the characters and not so focused on actually running around and playing as those characters because we've kind of seen most of the main squad there's gonna be a couple more that we're gonna discuss as well uh, but the main characters that you could think of uh, being hugely hugely important in the story of Lego City are uh, have already all been showcased as far as uh, the police officer of Lego City undercover. So here we have Avery Cruz, who I assume is supposed to be probably like a motorcycle rider since she seems to have a motorcycle helmet. So it would make sense that she probably cruises and patrols the city. Then we have Chuck Morrison, who works down in the basement of the police station. He's always taking care of the police station and all their vehicles and making sure that everything is running operationally and smooth. So obviously one of those kind of unsung hero type characters from Lego City. So he's hugely, hugely important, of course. Then we have the mayor, a.k.a. Mayor Gleason. She's hugely important as well. I still don't really know why exactly they make her the police officer character instead of making her just part of the citizens. Because I feel like she's a politician. She's not a police officer. So I'm a little confused as to why she was given the police officer abilities. So that's a bit of a strange decision to me. But, again, that might be just something where that's just my thoughts on it, and you guys might disagree. So let me know if you guys agree or disagree, actually. Do you think that she should have been a part of the citizens, or is she okay as part of the police force? Next up, we have B or Bea Heckerson. It's got a really cool, unique hairpiece. You don't see that one very, very often, so that's definitely neat. And by the way, how funny is it that you can Police still business. jump into cars? Like, look at this. <laughs> like, your thighs are just seeping through the sides of the vehicle but yeah you're driving a car somehow so yeah that that's that's happened look at this i mean like are you kidding me <laughs> it looks like do you know those like plastic toy cars that they make for kids the ones that are, are actually really cool i've always wanted to have one of those when i was a kid i always thought it'd be really cool to have one of those like the ones that run on batteries you know where you sit and then you press and it kind of like makes this like 
and then it starts rolling slowly. Like those types of cars, that's what these mini figures or super mini figures look like when they're driving these vehicles. It just looks like you're trying to get an adult to fit into one of those tiny plastic little cars. That's exactly what we have going on here. And it's certainly a sight to behold. That's for sure. Now, from there, from Ted Baxter, we move right along to the next police officer character, which will be the one and only Pat Patterson. So let's go on ahead and actually hop and drive to another area. Uh, I wonder what it would look like if we drive the bus, actually, Sorry, or the garbage truck. <laughs> okay, yep. That That's an interesting look, that's for sure. There. Oh, hello. Coming through, Pat Patterson. Coming all through. Headed towards the pier. And headed towards the beautiful... Um, what is it called? That big giant circle where you sit and then... Not a tilt-a-whirl. Oh my gosh, what's the name of it? Ferris wheel. Goodness gracious. I just like, my brain is like going like tilt a world, tilt a world, tilt a world. I'm like, it's not tilt a world. I don't even know what tilt a world is. Isn't that a wrestling move? Tilt a world slam. I think it is. Gosh. Yeah. So, so that happened. This looks like uh, if Optimus Prime mistransformed, right? <laughs> That's what would happen. <laughs> it's like, um, Optimus, I think you combined into a human with a human. What happened there? Transform and roll out. That's what happened. All right, so from Pat Patterson, we move right along to Butch Patterson, probably his son or something like that, maybe his uncle, his cousin. They're related by last name, so maybe they're related. Who knows? Uh, Butch Patterson looks kind of very generic -y. you know, just a plain white uh, T-shirt, really not too much to the character, so let's just go on ahead and skip to the next one. So from there, we have Rodney Baxter, who, again... Similar thing. Really not much to him, as you can see. Just the white t-shirt, everything going on. Or what is it? Are those, I think they're called White Beater or something like that shirt. Or I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. So either way, let's move right along from that guy over to Shaky Harry, whom we've already seen. So we're going to skip him and head to Stutsky, who does appear in the game. And I really like that we have the Studsky and Hudge reference. Uh, can Police we drive business. this? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm about to deliver some pizza. Even though it's probably going to be the world's stinkiest pizza ever. Because it's got his butt on it! I mean, come on, dude. That seems just incredibly impractical. I can't believe we actually can jump with this thing still. Like, that just looks crazy. Whoa! Gonna leave a debt. There goes Studsky! Studsky, look at these skills! This is like extreme sport with Stutsky. Coming through, folks. Yeah! There is the fountain of 100% celebration. If you're like, hey, what are you talking about? Um, I'll probably do a video on that. That could be really fun. Woohoo! There we go. Sweet parking, dude. Sweet parking. So that was Stutsky. And of course, we need to see his partner as well because they don't go by Stutsky and Hutch for no reason or. In this case, it's not Hutch. It's Clutch. Get it? So, <laughs> there we are. These are guys. These guys are, I think are based on the um, TV show something and Hutch. And uh, it's an older show. I've never watched it. I, I don't know if anybody who's watching this has seen it. But if you have, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, these guys look a lot more kind of like uh, TV show detectives. You know, that's kind of the vibe that you get from them. And then again, also TV show detectives from like an older school show, like 70s or something like that. So that's not a bad thing per se. And I think it's really cool that we get those tiny little Easter eggs in there. Then we have Brickett. Detective Brickett. Looks very fancy. Uh, very fancy hairpiece. I actually don't know if there's any other character in the game that has that specific one. So that's definitely quite unique. And of course, all of the abilities that we've seen before are maintained for this character as well. Then we transition into Blubs. A little bit more of a generic looking character uh, compared to some of the other ones. I like the hairpiece because it gives you a little bit more personality and attitude. It's something a little different. But the suit obviously just makes the character look a little bit generic -y for the most part then from there we transition onwards and forwards into the one and only Dumumbo which is a reference to Columbo an old school again uh, TV show detective which I actually did watch uh, with my grandpa a few episodes um, and I remember 
watching Colombo, and it was actually a pretty good show from what I remember, so uh, kind of an interesting little Easter egg that I was very, very surprised to see. And it was actually my mom that pointed out this Easter egg the first time that I played the game. She was like, the Mumbo? Are, are they referring to Colombo? And I was like, what? And then she was like, that show you, like, Grandpa used to watch all the time. I was like, oh! And then I put two and two together, and I was like, yeah, that's probably exactly what they were referring to. So that was definitely a really cool surprise to have that character appear in the game. Then we have Lagny here. Again, I don't know... If uh, some of these might be other references to other famous detectives from TV shows or movies that I maybe just completely am missing out on or they're going way over my head. So if you know any ones that I did not point out, please let me know down in the comment section below because I think it would be really cool if you share that with others so that we could all enjoy that as well. Then we have Casey here. Again, very old school looking haircut. And uh, I'm not sure. Again, for some reason I have a feeling like this character is probably based on some type of TV show or something like that as well just due to the kind of old school nature of the outfit you know it looks like something that you would see in like an 80s type TV show all right so from Casey we move right along to Horace or Horic Cone Horic Cone I don't know or Horace Cone looks like a lawyer more so than a police officer or maybe like a an attorney you know like um, um Oh gosh, what are they called? Like what's Harvey Dent is? The DA, the district attorney. There we go. My goodness. Sometimes I'm just like, English, you're betraying me. How dare you, English language? Now, this is one of my personal favorites in the police category, just because I've always been a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes as a character. And this is, of course, Doorlock Holmes. I really, 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 really quite like this design. I think they did a great job with it. In fact, they did such a good job with it that they went ahead and posted it in the game twice. So you'll see in a second uh, another variation of that character. So with Doorlock Holmes out of the way, we move right along to Dr. Watson, aka, of course, Dr. Watson, his handy assistant that we would typically see help Mr. Doorlock Holmes, aka Sherlock Holmes. So that is very cool. I really, really like what they did with this one. I really like the print work and the, again, old school design for the costume. So that is fantastic. From Dr. Watson, we're going on ahead, onwards and forwards to the prison guard. And with the prison guard and all of the other guard characters, they are a little generic -y, like there isn't anything to make them stand out from one another, but they do try to vary it up just based on the costumes that they're wearing and the, um, and sorry, I said that there isn't anything to make them stand out, and then I proceed to name the things that make them stand out, so I know it kind of sounds confusing, but what I meant to say is that they're not that unique. Like, even if we compare them to some of the other characters, like Blubs, for example, he's got a unique hairpiece, and that really makes him stand out, whereas these guys, you can see that it's pretty generic like hey security supervisor you know or the security guard so i'm not going to go on ahead and focus on those guys all that much and we're just going to move right along to the ranger barber who actually looks awesome i really like the ranger hat and the unique design that she has compared to the other officers again it's really cool that they went ahead and not just took like hey okay let's make 10 female police officers 10 male police officers and pretty much make them look all the same and very generic -y. They went ahead and actually gave us a like, different type of police officers. Like this one looks more like a ranger. And uh, Duke Huckleberry looked more like a ranger, remember? And then we have more traditional police officers. And then we have ones that look like detectives. And then other ones that look like district attorneys. So we get kind of a nice mix of different characters. Here we have another ranger. This is Ranger Lewis this time. And following that up with Quentin Spencer, as well as Officer Park, again, for example, with Officer Park, you can see that she has a very different costume to ones that we've seen before. She kind of looks more like a maybe an officer that is about to be honored with some sort of a uh, like title or she's solved some sort of a crime or something like that. And therefore, she's getting an honoree. So she's dressed up a little bit differently and so on and so forth. So I think that that's definitely really cool to see that there is some variation within the category of the police officers. And again, that would make sense. You have 42 characters. It would be really bad if they looked all the same or even very very similar to one another so last but certainly not least that we're going to talk about is the traffic cop uh, and the reason why i'm saying it's last but certainly not least because the last character that is on there is as i mentioned before another doorlock holmes which is why it's sort of funny that if we look at it like remember here's doorlock holmes okay so you've got the uh hair on the sides the jacket and everything and then you have the detective it's the same exact character. 
<laughs> like, I don't get it. I guess maybe they just, like, wanted you to be able to run around as two Sherlock Holmes. Instead of being, like, a Sherlock Holmes and a Dr. Watson, you'd be like, hey, I'll be Sherlock Holmes, you'd be Dr. Watson. So, that's pretty funny that they went ahead and included that. So, with that being said, I say we go on ahead and call in one of the very cool police vehicles. Because there are a lot of really sweet looking police vehicles in the game, actually. Uh, I would say that most of them are actually quite awesome. So, you have all of these, basically. This entire front row up until these, which are the firefighter vehicles, are all variations on different police vehicles. Probably the one that I like best... Um, I would say that I really, really like this one right here. The detainer is really cool. I think it looks really neat. This one is crazy fun to drive because it's just ginormous, the MOV. And then, I don't see, where's the Jeep? That's not it, is it? No, it's not. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I don't know how I missed it. The Rhino right there. This one's really cool, too. But... In order to make things hilarious, since we're using the super minifig, we're going to go on ahead and get one of these pink scooters. We're going to get the traffic cop, and we're going to go direct some traffic, because that's what he's up to. So, of course, ladies and gents, don't forget, if you guys enjoyed today's LEGO City Undercover video, please consider hitting that like button. How sad is it that this guy's driving like a Ferrari, and I'm driving a scooter, and I've just passed him? That's crazy. But, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> I need some front-facing mirrors. Oh, wait. Aren't those my eyes? Yeah, I, I could have probably depended on those. You can't see a thing, though. That's the problem. That's why I couldn't see that thing in front of me. But, nevertheless, ladies and gents, if you guys enjoyed today's absolutely crazy, crazy showcase video for LEGO City Undercover, don't forget to hit that like button. Let me know who was your favorite police officer character in the game you can name your top three down in the comment section below and while you're doing that please consider hitting that like button that is always very 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 highly appreciated i will hopefully catch each and every single one of you lovely lovely folks here next time as we continue the showcase videos for lego city undercover pew pew see you later folks alligators